Welcome to a video from the digitallifestyle.com. We have another video with a Windows 10 inside a build. This is 14328 for PC and there's a mobile build available. We'll do that in a separate video. This build includes a lot of new features and I'm running it here on my uh, Surface Pro 3. First of all, you can see straight away we've got Cortana on the lock screen. We can do stuff. Um, we've got media transport, transport controls over here so we can play music or pause music from here. In fact, let me just show you that. Play me some music. Resuming. And there you go. So we've got Cortana there. Play music directly from the lock screen, which I think is is pretty cool. And we've got the transport controls there as well, which I do like. So actually quite a lot in this one to show you. And the main feature is the new Windows inking uh, features. So I'm going to use my Surface Pen, and what I mean by that is we've got, got this new inking icon down there. It shows automatically if you've got a pen-enabled device. You can do show that icon through the settings and use the finger for drawing, but we're going to be using this Surface Pen, and I'm going to tap the button on my pen, and there it brings up the new inking control. So we've got sticky notes, so we can bring up a note. I'm going to add a new note, and uh, right on here... Hello, and there's a new note. So you can quickly add notes with that um, using this inking feature, and maybe I'll get rid of that one and come back out of it. And I can tap the button again, and I can go up and uh, go straight into this drawing program, which is good for drawing things like that. But let me erase this. What is new in this is. Let's say we're in the pen mode and I want to draw a box. Let's draw a bit deeper. There we go, a box. Not very straight. So let's bring the ruler on and I'll bring the ruler and I want a straight line there. And I can use my fingers to say I want it there. And then let's navigate that. Move that. I want it up here. And so you can see exactly what I mean. I can have a nice straight line there and you can even draw up to it like that so if maybe if you've got a highlighter you can highlight the line like that and shift that out of the way so so someone with better art skills than me could do a lot with this but I do like the ruler on there it's, it's very handy and uh, I like the way you, you can use touch on the ruler or you can use a pen I guess Maybe no, you just use touch for the ruler, which I think is a is a great idea. So that's really good. Um, let's see what else, and we can share that. Then you can share that through the normal Windows sharing scheme. So email, OneNote, uh, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want. You've also got quick access to apps as well, so I can quickly bring up word like that so a very um, flexible system very powerful and I think it's got a lot more to come it does say it integrates with the maps and um, office and edge now with the maps I saw a demo of them doing stuff with the pen on it at build and to be honest I couldn't really do anything with the pen I don't know if I'm missing something or whether it's just the apps are not enabled yet but so the pen was just using this as touch input, I couldn't sort of draw on it, unless I can see. Yeah, I can't see any options, maybe someone can email me, ianvisualifestyle.com or ixdixon on Twitter, and you can help me with that. So with the pen, I can also you know, draw on Internet Explorer using the, the built-in tool, in, in Edge I should say, not Internet Explorer, using the built-in tools. It's, so I think there's more to come from that. I think um, so you can use it in Office as well with the drawing tools as well. But uh, I think there's a lot more to come from the inking features, and I think this is looking uh, pretty good so far. Uh, yeah, we've got the pen tools there that we can enable, uh, which I think we're already in Office. But just the fact that you could, if you want to quickly take a note, you can just tap the pen, and you can get straight to the ink space, and you can do whatever you, you need to do. So I think that's looking quite good. 
Right, what else has changed in this? Well, the start menu's changed. If I hit start here, you can see now we've got our most used there, and then the all apps list. So, you don't have to tap the hamburger menu to get the all apps list. And also, you've got shortcuts for power, settings, uh, file explorer, and I have added a uh, documents folder. You can man you can customize this and add your own shortcuts to there. So the hamburger menu really just shows the descriptions of those. So rather than going to new features, so I think that's quite good. It's, it's, it, it saves one click, which I, put, I guess is more consistent uh, and makes it a lot easier to use. If I stick it in tablet mode, see tablet mode, um, slightly different. Again, we've got, see up, right, up here right at the top, you've got a hamburger menu that again just shows the text. Um, but normally it shows pin, what they call pin tiles, so that's your, your tiles view. Or you can hit the all apps list, it's got the most used apps and your, your all apps list, or back to tiles. So I, I guess that makes sense, it's a bit more like Windows 8.1 in tablet mode actually now. Uh, well, in Windows 8.1 in general, when you're using it, especially on a tablet. So. I don't. I never really still had any issues with it before, but anyway, there you go. And if you go to personalization and start, you can see you can choose which folders appear on start, and you can toggle those on off. So if you wanted the uh, pictures folder, you can do that. That pictures folder is there now. And talking of tablet mode, if I go to tablet mode on here, automatically hide taskbar in tablet mode, which I think makes sense when you're using it in a tablet. So when you're not in a tablet mode, you get a taskbar, but then if you open up um, an application in, ta in tablet mode, you get the full screen experience without the taskbar at the bottom. Personal preference, but again, taking you a bit more how it was in Windows 8.1, which tend to be a little more tablet friendly, less keyboard user friendly, and that, that this is sort of putting those settings back in. So I quite like that, I think I'll, I'll leave that on there. The other thing you do now is create Cortana um, notifications from search. So let's see, uh, say I've got a picture, sorry, a tablet note. Another thing you can do is create Cortana notifications from pictures view. So let's say I've got an image on here and I um, I can share this image as you would do normally and there I can choose Cortana reminders and I can create a reminder. Uh, remember to post the Pick whatever you want to do, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have that at uh, my current location. Done. So that's created a, a Cortana reminder for for that in the current location. Uh, let's go. Let's name that as home. I think we've done this already. Uh, so there we go. So I can create a reminder there. And. I noticed this before, it won't save. Now I don't know whether that's um, a problem with my machine or whether it's a language thing, but uh, I've had, I've not been able to get reminders like that to save currently. It does work on the phone build. So this works with anything, theoretically work with anything that you can share. So it could be a news article, it could be a web page, anything like that. Uh, also fixed in this is the cross device notifications of Cortana so it should show up the uh, things like low battery alerts and, and things like that. Now, talking of notifications, you see notifications it is now grouped together uh, like they are on the phone build now so you get the mail ones, you get the store ones well look at that, a notification on store that's new as well so it actually tells you when apps are updated now in the store and so you get them grouped together, they will have an image in there, so like for Cortana notifications you'll get that image if that would work, that picture would, would appear when it is with the notifications as well, which I think is better. And if you, if I come out of tablet mode, it's not showing it currently there, but um, down here that the little icon would have a three on there to indicate three 
new notifications um, currently there are none on there maybe if I open the mail app you, we can see something as well now currently this isn't doing it um, but I'll minimize these and maybe it will do shortly but that would say like this in fact I'll, what I'll do to demonstrate this I'll fire a notification through and then we can see what it looks like I'm sure before it had the number of unread emails as well, but anyway, that's showing you one there, and as notifications coming through, this increases one, two, three, and so on. You can now customize this and choose which ones show up. So if you don't ever use the, let's see, which one would I not use of those? Maybe um, the note, turn it off, and it's gone from there. Or if I want to put it back on, I can put it back on. So you can then uh, quickly do that. Now something else I've noticed when I was on here is um, we're on audio, so you, there's the headphone volume because I've got the headphones plugged in, but if I go up here I can see both. So I can have headphones and both operations, so it's not one or the other, you can, you, you can pick which one you want rather than it being determined by just the headphones being plugged in. So. Effectively, you could leave the headphones plugged in, use the normal speaker, and then switch the headphones when you want it, which I think is a nice little little change. Oh, and also I should say as well on here now the clock, and when you tap on that, it actually shows you appointments from your uh, calendar, which and, uh, and reminders and things like that in here. So from your mate, from your calendar app, which I think is a very uh, good idea. It's all in one place then. The pen settings got some new updates on there so you can have what you to do when the pen is clicked once double clicked or press and hold which I think is a, a good idea so you can choose now whether to have um, sent to one note or ink workspace or, or whatever you choose to have on that which I think is is quite good now another setting that is really handy is with the apps mode if I go into in there and then go to apps and features now we might have all put you you probably had this if you have windows 10 for a while is where an app goes bad say the calendar in this case the calculator app it just doesn't work you can't reinstall it you uninstall reinstall doesn't work but there's now an advanced option is to reset it so if something goes bad you can reset it and that will sort it out as well something else changes the uh, so admin privileges, the elevated uh, privileges that I, um, UI has changed so if a program wants to have admin rights it has this UI now which I think looks a bit cleaner and probably a little bit easier to understand. We've got a new file explorer icon, I don't, that's not actually, let me open the file explorer and I can show you what I mean. There, now you white file ex explorer. There's also a lot of fixes with this one. Um, you're probably better to read the release notes on, on it, really, uh, if you want to have a look at that. One thing I found before this was really sluggish opening this on the previous build, that's been fixed and that isn't in the release notes. There are a lot of known issues around connected standby, uh, but there are notes around this. One thing, it, the, the interesting one is they say uh, groove music, you shouldn't play groove mu music within 10 or within two minutes of starting up Windows, you'll get an error. So if you wait two minutes, it will play back fine. Uh, so more information on that along on the blog post on the digitallifestyle.com. Uh, I'm just keep finding stuff on this build actually. It's been really good to see some of the changes and the, the new UI. I really like the Windows inking. You can see, go look back at all our previous videos on the digitallifestyle.com.